Ah, man, they paid. All right, we are live. Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to episode two of Myrtle Beach Live. We've got a couple people on right now. Before we get into today's topic, we'll wait another couple of minutes to see if anybody else joins. Um, if you're new to this channel, Moving to Myrtle Beach, my name is Nick Pelosi. I'm a real estate agent here in Myrtle Beach with Remax Southern Shores. And on this channel, we talk about things to do here in Myrtle Beach. We have tips and advice about the area. And of course, we talk about the real estate. Um, this is a live show that we're doing the third Thursday of every month. So we are live. We can see your comments. So if you have any questions, let us know. We'll be happy to answer those. I'm here with Rob Ferraro and Ray Finocchio. Um, up, they're going to introduce themselves. Rob, go ahead. I'm Rob Ferraro I'm with New Wave Lending Group here in the Myrtle Beach area. And I'm excited to uh, take you guys down a little stroll, the Grand Strand here, show you a little bit of my neighborhood and the surrounding areas. Hey, everybody. I'm Ray Finocchio. Uh, I'm a franchise owner for Goosehead Insurance uh, here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, independent agent here, um, appointed with about 30 carriers to shop your insurance. And uh, I've been here for 18 years and uh, I'm eager to learn uh, some new things about this area because there's still parts I haven't explored. It's more than just downtown Myrtle Beach. Very nice. Cool. Well, we'll go ahead and get into today's topic. So let me see if we can share this here. So today we're just going to be explaining Myrtle Beach, the greater Myrtle Beach area, which is also known as the Grand Strand, which is basically 65 miles of beach from the North Carolina, South Carolina border all the way down past Pauly's Island into Georgetown. Um, really, it's just that coastline, but I think a lot of us also consider inland to Conway as well. So we're going to talk about some of those different areas, what you can expect from those areas, home-wise, community-wise, things to do in the area, and all that fun stuff. So you can see here we have a overview map of the Grand Strand, again, from the North Carolina, South Carolina border all the way down to Pauly's Island. Let me go ahead and get our names out of the way for you there so you can see that a little bit better. Um, and again, this is just an overview of the towns in the area. Um, it also shows on here the where the hospitals are located. So we have three hospitals along the beach. We also have one inland in Conway as well. Um, and here's another neat little overview. Um, both these graphics are courtesy of Rob, so thank you. Um, this one's kind of neat because it shows where the intercoastal waterway runs through, where the Waccamaw River runs through, and where the PD River runs through. So some pretty neat overviews there. Um, again, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Let's see Kenny M. Hi, guys. I'm coming down to look May 5th. I may need help with everything. Kenny, we'd love to meet you. Reach out if you have any questions. We'll be happy to help you, meet you in person, and guide you through the area. So thank you for the comment. So I'm going to go ahead and share this Google Maps right here. And this is where we are going to start. So Everybody always asks me when they're thinking about moving here, they're like, hey, we don't want to live in Myrtle Beach because we know that's the touristy area where all of the visitors come each and every summer, millions and millions of visitors. Um, you know, you might be used to vacationing to the area and staying in the downtown and you know that that can become hectic and crazy. But we want you to know there's more to Myrtle Beach, not just the surrounding towns, right? We have Little River, North Myrtle Beach. We have Surfside, Myrtle's Inlet. We have Pauly's Island. You can go inland to Conway. Um, but even within Myrtle Beach itself, there's a lot of areas that are outside of that touristy area that feel much more residential. They don't experience um, those big crowds of people like downtown Myrtle Beach does. So we're just going to share that all with you this so we can get a better idea of what the area is like. Um, what do you consider downtown Myrtle Beach? It's it's only about 60 blocks. You know, it goes to 48th Avenue North to about 20, 29th Avenue South. And uh, that's the tourist trap. 
Um, I think when people think downtown Myrtle Beach, they think about the Sky Wheel and the Boulevard mm -hmm. and, you know, all those skyscrapers down there uh, yeah. on the beach. That's exactly right. Uh, I think the main center is really where like 501 meets 17, right? So um, this is where a lot of that touristy stuff is, right? You have the Ripley's. Um, you have all the shops and beach stores. Um, you have the little park downtown. Of course, you have the Sky Wheel. Um, so this is really like the center of it all, right? And then, of course, the hotels go a bit north. You can see all the high-rise hotels, oceanfront condos right there on the beach. Um, and then it goes south a bit as well, um, like Ray mentioned. Here, we'll zoom out a little bit. Now, if you're looking in the area for a rental condo or something, maybe this, you know, uh, very condensed area here would be something that, that you're interested in because, again, it's going to bring the tourists. It's going to bring the renters, right? right. It's where all the, all the tourists want to be, but the local, locals do not. But there's a lot of locals that live inland just past that 17 uh, North Kings Highway. Um, you know, you would think that's still tourists, but that's almost all locals living right there. So, yep. so, and that's actually a good point where we can start off right with the exploring here. Um, so as we mentioned, there's a lot of areas even right within Myrtle Beach that are still very residential. A really good example of that is actually right on the beach. Um, and that's the Golden Mile, right? So that's just north of all these hotels we just took a look at and beautiful area yeah multi-million dollar homes this is where you're if you're looking for a home on the golden mile i'm sure rob would be happy to lend you money yes <laughs> or borrow money yes and I'd, I'd be happy to get you in the doors and, and help you purchase it but yeah, this is where all your multi-million dollar oceanfront homes are here in myrtle beach um, really great residential area when you're in the area i definitely recommend driving through here and checking it out Feels very nice, um, very welcoming. Um, this is all public beach here, even though the homes are right on the beach. A lot of them you can see have access to the beach, um, yeah. but every three or four homes, you actually have public parking within city of Myrtle Beach limits. So you can come here and park, you do have to pay for it. Um, but this is a great place to go to the beach. If you're in Myrtle Beach, it's a lot quieter. A lot, of, a lot of locals go here, yep. you know, 40, 44th Ave North and up. Uh, it's where a lot of the locals like to hang out and get away from the tourists. Yep, 64th was my avenue growing up. I spent probably half my childhood there on that <laughs> beach access. Yep. So this is a really cool spot. And then just north of this is a, another cool spot. A lot of smaller condos here versus the high-rise hotels. Um, this is the cabana section. This is a really neat section of the beach here because as you can see, there's no buildings, no homes, no condos, ocean side of the street. All of your buildings are going to be west of the street. Um, so this is a really neat spot to just come and go for a walk because you can walk on the sidewalks here, ocean side of the street and have unobstructed views of the ocean. That's actually where that workout trail is too. They yeah. have uh, a running trail and then right through that path that you can see that's beach side, they have pull-up bars and, and push-up uh, equipment and uh, a bunch of other see, aesthetic, yeah. you know, workout machines. A little street view here. Nice. So this is what it'd be like walking on the beach here. Um, again, very nice feeling. Yeah, it's very peaceful up, up there. Yep. We take our kids. Our kids like to run down the sidewalk uh, from one workout equipment to the next. And then there's also a little playground right at the beginning of that. Yeah, and then it's called the cabana section because you have these little cabanas here that are ocean side of the street, which these, I believe, used to be connected to um, the homes that used to be here before these condos existed. Um, and they just kind of got deeded in. Um, and now these actually sell separately. Um, so these go up for sale every now and again. Um, people pay a lot of money for them. They're like over a million bucks for a little, and they're like 400 square feet, right? Yeah, you something. can't you can't even live in them. Um, they're really just used as like some of them have little kitchens in them, bathrooms. So it's 
kind of like your own little private beach house that you can come and use. Um, I don't know that they go quite for a million, maybe some of the bigger ones, um, but definitely three, four, five, six hundred thousand I've seen for these little cabanas. Um, I never knew that. Crazy to think about. Learning mm -hmm. something new already. Yeah. Yeah. Got a lot of comments rolling in. So before we continue, I'll just take a scroll through here. Kenny says he likes Little River and Merle's Inlet. We're definitely going to get to both of those towns. Good point, Kenny. We're definitely going to talk about that. Jeff says, looking forward to meeting up with you, Nick. See you soon. Looking forward to meeting you as well, Jeff. He also said it's cold up in my old hometown today, mid-40s. It was like 80 degrees today in Myrtle Beach. It's rough. Yeah, it's nice a rough one <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Scott says hello. Hey, Scott. Cool. So we'll keep getting on with the tour here. Anything else you guys want to talk about these areas? No, I think that covers it. You got the dunes and grand dunes as you yeah. go up north. Some cool town or neighborhoods close by to here that are like right outside of like the cabana section in the Golden Mile. You have the Pine Lakes area. Um, so there's an older section here with like custom homes. Um, Lennar also recently just built a section where you can find homes around the $500,000 mark, maybe a little bit less. Um, really cool golf course as well. Oldest golf course in Myrtle Beach. And still one of the nicest. Yep. yep. The granddaddy is yeah. what they call it. We actually just played there not too long ago. That's the first time I played there. It's pretty awesome. Um, just... I was going to say, show, show them where like uh, the main tourist attractions are here, like Broadway, the beach. And yep. Okay. So just south of that, again, where all the hotels are is where you have some of that fun stuff you probably do when you're on vacation, right? We have Top Golf here. Um, and then this is Broadway at the beach. So it's close, but really a lot of people, you know, some people do venture out, but a lot of people when they're on vacation, they're going to stay in their specific areas right along the beach. They're going to go do all the touristy stuff. So this place, Broadway at the beach is a zoo in the summer. Um, if you do own rental properties, um, being close to this stuff is, is great because, you know, that's what people want to be close to. Um, and speaking of that, not only ocean front, but you also have cool spots like the Magnolia Point condos which are here on the Myrtlewood golf courses, um, two also very nice golf courses. That's, um, that's prime investment property right there. Oh yeah. So you got two and three bedroom condos mainly. They do have some one bedrooms as well. Um, like this is Magnolia Point. You also have Magnolia North and Magnolia Place. Um, you have golf course views. You're real close to the ocean, um, maybe like two miles. So golf cart distance. Um, yeah, that makes for a great investment property because yeah. you take advantage of that golf season. You know, this time of year, the fall, uh, you can kind of pander to that golfing uh, market. You yeah. know, the people coming down here for golf vacations. Yeah, it's a cool spot, especially if you're somebody who's going to want to use your investment condo yourself and you don't want to be in all the downtown craziness when you're here yourself with your family. That's a really great spot. Um you know, there's some perks that as well, right? Your HOA dues aren't going to be as high. Your insurance isn't going to be as high. A lot of people live in Magnolia Point permanently as well. Um, so your market for resale is more than just investors. Um, so that's a really cool area there. Um, and also backs up right to the Intracoastal Waterway as well. So some of these holes here in Middlewood, you get a nice view of that waterway there. Um, I want to go south a little bit just so we can continue talking about Myrtle Beach before we like venture out into some of the other towns. Um, so just south of downtown, this is where you have the airport, right? And then there's some really cool areas right around here that are still within Myrtle Beach city limits, um, but outside of all that tourism and that's Market Common. So that's this area here. Um, this is, I'd say, probably the closest thing we have to a city, mm -hmm. right? It's not it, big by any means. It reminds me a lot of Charleston gonna, with yeah. the Charleston style homes. You got the, the live work um, townhomes with the businesses operating on the first floor and people living up above. It's a real cool area. Yeah, the golf, golf cart lifestyle is big there, Market Common. A lot of restaurants, shopping. You can get to the beach very easily. 
You got to spend a lot of time down here. I remember when it actually used to look like that. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think this is... uh, this is necessarily up to up date. To date. I got that place is getting built out. Yeah, I got on the wrong street there. I was yeah. trying to get over here. There's breweries there now. I mean, there's all kinds of nicer restaurants, um, nicer shops. Your movie theater. Here we go. I was looking for the main street. I got myself a little bit confused there. Here we go. There's some nice parks too as well, but I mean, this is such an awesome area to come hang out, do some shopping, grab some food. So this is like the main strip here, Howard Avenue. Um, Grab a beer and walk around the shops. Yep. There's a movie theater back there. And then uh, this is where they host a lot of the uh, travel baseball and softball uh, tournaments just, just down the road from here. Yep. So here's the movie theater um the brewery is back here title creek this is a cool area um doesn't this is all done up now there's really nice outdoor area yeah. um, where you can just hang out enjoy the sun it's really outdoor cool seating spot. outdoor cor- cornhole i think there's a cornhole league yeah um there now is. that that goes around myrtle beach yeah and then here's Faro parkway so this is kind of like the main road through um, so there's like park areas, looks like they, when Google maps was going through, they were setting up for some sort of event because they're always yeah, doing yeah, events here. Yeah. 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 They do a New Year's Eve ball drop there, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. They do. Though this they last year, they didn't, they didn't drop a ball this last year. Normally they put a ball up on a crane this year. They just did like a laser light show. Definitely. was oh, not. Really? Yeah. Definitely was not as cool. Um, but yeah, this is market common, very cool area. Um, we were talking about like the Charleston style homes. I think that is right over. I get all confused from the aerial view. I think this is where we're at right here. Yep. So these are like all really close to downtown Myrtle beach. So if you're somebody who doesn't necessarily need a big yard, um, you just want to be close to things to do. You can walk to restaurants, shops, and golf let, cars. Let me ask you a question. Go back uh, Go back to that blue house on the go left. What is the deal with that fake front door on these Charleston style homes? <laughs> the one on the right. Yeah, where it's I like can, you have a front door yeah. into your front porch yeah. before you have a front door into your home. <laughs> I, never I could not that. figure out what the point of that first door is. Yeah, that's just this ch- <laughs> style in Charleston. Like you go down in Charleston, you see yeah, that they do everywhere. Have a lot of yeah everywhere um and then you also here's those softball fields you're talking about the travel yeah. baseball and everything and then you also have a bunch of communities kind of on the outskirts that aren't necessarily walking distance downtown but still golf cart distance um this is all golf cart distance the beach by the way um just south of downtown really cool beach right here where spring made pier is very mm-hmm. quiet because oh, again yeah. all the hotels end and then on the other end here you have myrtle beach state park um, so that's really neat. Another local there. speech. Yep. I'm going to get us back centered here. So those are some cool areas, again, within Myrtle Beach city limits that are outside of the downtown. So, again, you can be in Myrtle Beach and not be in all that craziness. So I wanted you guys to all know that. Um, and then the next area I want to talk about is Carolina Forest, which is still technically Myrtle Beach, right? A lot of people consider this its own town because it's gotten to be so big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, this is just a master planned community, just like Market Common was. Um, it's grown a lot. There's a lot of talks of it becoming its own town or its own city. But today, I mean, it's still part of Myrtle Beach. Um, so you don't live at 123 Main Street. Carolina Forest, you live at 123 Main Street, Myrtle Beach. Does yep. have a separate zip code though. Yeah, but that it's got that Myrtle Beach address in the in the address is what people care about. Yep. Yeah. So the main road running through Carolina Forest, Carolina Forest Boulevard. Um, I've done a driving tour on this. This is where you find all of your big communities like the parks and the farm and water bridge, which is where you live, right? Yeah. Um, it's a nice mix of uh, cookie cutter homes like the DR Horton and the Lennar homes, as well as custom home neighborhoods. Um, you got brand new neighborhoods and then you got established neighborhoods like uh, Plantation Lakes, um, where you can see some nice older homes that have character. So you got 
whatever your flavor is is uh you can find it in carolina forest yeah this is where i live this is my favorite part of the beach yeah carolina forest is great and especially on carolina forest boulevard it is all residential you don't see any businesses or anything on the street they did just open up a little strip mall with a gas station and everything yeah uh, which is needed it's nice to have that close but as they, you can see they just built those walking paths down the road and uh we take we take my kids we walk down there we take the golf cart down there um i don't know if you're, that's technically allowed but um. <laughs> it's definitely not allowed. <laughs> don't give yourself away yeah yep so here's plantation lakes a lot of big custom homes a little bit older of a community show them the water bridge pool because people are blown away when they see that yeah let's the lakes and water bridge are awesome too yeah. right so yeah but yeah, here's that water so, bridge pool. so this neighborhood has the biggest residential pool in the state um just for scale this little this little pool in the corner that's an olympic sized swimming pool um and everything connects so this is what draws everybody to this neighborhood we we bought a lot in this neighborhood just so we can get access to the pool before we built i mean this is you could spend your whole summer here and yeah, that's uh, definitely a full-blown resort style amenity center that is you definitely see a lot of great amenities in carolina forest i mean this is where you're gonna find a lot of your communities that have like the lazy rivers the big mm -hmm. resort style pools pickleball um, courts playgrounds, tennis yeah. courts um, Berkshire Forest is another one that has like the Lazy River. Um, the parks just put in a Lazy River, which I think yeah. is going to be the first summer that that's open. Um, so definitely a really cool area. Um, so Carolina Forest is more than just Carolina Forest Boulevard. You also have River Oaks. Um, this is where you're going to find all of your like waterway communities in Carolina Forest. So you have like Carolina Waterway Plantation. Um, you have Waterway Palms, which also has a pretty impressive amenity center here that's just surrounded by their lake. Not as yeah. big of a pool, but you got the tennis courts and everything. Very nice. little center island here. Um, so that's Waterway Palms. And those houses on the inner yeah. coastal right there. Yep. I was going to say, those, those three neighborhoods give you access to the waterway. Uh, Carolina Waterway Plantation, Waterway Palms, and then the, the Bluffs, Bluffs is just the above end. that. Yeah. Yep. There's actually a boat ramp right there where the yep. house is in. Yep. So there's a boat ramp. It's on the other side yeah. of Waterway Palms. Waterway Palms on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. So boat ramp there. I think in Carolina That's Waterway right. Plantation, the, it's on this side. Yeah. And these communities also, they, they have uh, storage space for your boats and RVs uh, that come with the price of the HOA fee. So they make it true, true resort style living down here. That's why I like Carolina Forest. Yep. So that's Carolina Forest. And I almost completely forgot that I, sh I uh, had these prepared here for the different towns. So Carolina Forest this is for the first quarter of this year. So January 1st through March 31st, there was 243 homes sold in Carolina Forest. At an average price of just under four hundred and eighty-five thousand. Um, this is just for single-family detached homes, so not mobile homes, not condos, just single-family homes. Um, and then also have for Myrtle Beach, there's a hundred and ten homes sold um, at an average price point of like five hundred and almost ninety-seven thousand dollars. Uh, Myrtle Beach is funny because, again, like Carolina Forest, when you type in the city Myrtle Beach, it brings up all the sales in uh, Carolina Forest, brings up all the sales in Surfside. So I just kind of like drew a rat map around mm -hmm. the main Myrtle Beach area. So these numbers could be off a little bit, but should give you a good gist of things. Um, should we go north or south from here? Let's back up and look at the intercoastal. Okay. You see, you see the intercoastal? You put your cursor on it? Yep. Now, as we zoom out, you can see that all through Myrtle Beach, there's no access from the intercoastal to the ocean, right? It lets out right there at Little River, right where the cursor is. And then again, down south in Myrtle's Inlet. And Kenny just said he was interested in Little River and in Myrtle's Inlet. And there's a, a big reason for that. Uh, I agree with Kenny. Those are my favorite parts of the coast. 
And it's because where the intercoastal lets out to the ocean, it forms just beautiful landscape and uh, waterfront restaurants and, and boardwalks that back up along the inlets. Uh, what you're going to see at, in Little River and, and Merle's Inlet is, you know, just that the inlets where the where the water comes in, it creates these bays. You have really good fishing. You have restaurants that are pulling seafood right off the fishing boats and serving them, uh, you know, fresh that day. Uh, you got catch of the day specials and all that good stuff. So not just for the restaurants and the entertainment. But for me, this is the best. These two places are the best part of the coast because it just offers that natural, you know, water scene. I love being out on the boat, being out in Vereen Gardens, which is like a waterfront memorial, you know, just a lot of really cool landscape there. Yep. And we're going to take a look at all of these towns that you just mentioned and areas he talked about a little bit more closely. Um, well, actually... We'll head north because I know that's where you live, Rob, right? Uh, but before we do, does the can you get out to the ocean from the intercoastal in Merle's Inlet or you have to go down to well, Georgetown? Yeah, yeah, you got to go through the Walker yeah, Mall. But you see the inlet right there? Yep. So that's where the water pours out to the ocean and it forms the inlet. Yep. You know, So down in Cherry Grove and Merle's Inlet, you have those beautiful bodies of water. Cool. So... Heading up from Myrtle Beach, we'll head north. Um, Myrtle Beach turns into North Myrtle Beach right around this Briarcliff Acres Atlantic Beach area. Um, and North Myrtle Beach is a separate town from Myrtle Beach, its own city. Um, a lot of people think it's just the north end of Myrtle Beach, but no, it is its own city. Um, before we get into that, I wanna talk about real quick Another cool area in Myrtle Beach is like the Grand Dunes area. Um, so this is where you find a lot of your other really big multi-million dollar homes, right? In Grand mm -hmm. Dunes, right along the intercoastal waterway. Um, this section of Myrtle Beach here is part of the reason why the average price point for Myrtle Beach is so high. Um, then you also have the dunes as well, which is different than Grand Dunes. Um, and they're right on the beach, actually. Um, so, and then from there, we turn into North Myrtle Beach. I like to think of Grand Dunes as new money, and then the Dunes Club area, that's old money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the Grand Dunes is a lot newer. Up. Yep. Cool. Um, so as we head up into North Myrtle Beach, Rob, I'm going to lean on you a little bit for this, because I know it's where you live. So what's the first place we should check out up on this this side of the beach well as you go for myrtle beach first you're going to hit that arcadian shores or arcadian dunes area and uh that's got its own little bit of character that's where you'll find restaurant row and a lot of the seafood buffets and then uh you got tanger outlet right there too tanger outlet yep and as you pass tanger outlet and go towards the beach it, it opens up, it's kind of its own little community in here, like so many of our areas are. Um, it's got its own golf courses in there. And it's also got tons of smaller condo complexes that are like three and four story uh, right along the beach. But you're kind of getting out of now it still has some of those big, you know, condo tells as we refer to them and resort style condos. Uh, but this is where you can kind of get away from that a little bit. Like you can see across the street, Mariners, Mariners Cove. That's a um, that's a good example of a smaller condo complex that has a lot of its own little character there. It actually backs up to a little inlet, and you're close. You're right across the street from the beach without being in a resort style yep. condo yeah. hotel. You got a lot of retirees that live on that other side of Shore Drive right there uh, as their primary residence, not just as a uh, secondary home or a, uh, a rental property. Yeah, so this is a really cool area. This is actually where my office is. Yeah. Ocean Annie's is up here too, right? Ocean right Annie's here. right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a cool spot to hang out. Live music. Big yeah. party spot for the tourists. Yeah, little spot, little beach bar, literally right yeah. on the beach. Yeah, beach bar. One of the few of them. So that's a cool spot there. Cool. And then just inland from here, we have Barefoot, right? 
barefoot landing. I gotta recalibrate. <laughs> it's down a little farther. Another great shopping go. center and restaurants and entertainment. Yeah, so this is kind of like, I always consider barefoot a little bit more of an upscale Broadway at the beach, right? With the shops and restaurants. Yep. So not quite as gardens. big as Broadway at the beach, but yeah, you have another um, brewery up here. Um, you have Lulu's right there, which is kind of cool. We like to take the boat and park right behind Lulu's and then just hang out around bear. But you can, we have a couple of little ones, so we'll take the kids to Lulu's and let them play in that sand pit back there with the playground and everything while we'll, you know, sit back and eat our food and, have a margarita. I will I will say as the insurance guy in this group, if you're looking in barefoot, just ask what the HOA fees are because uh, they got hit with some of the worst increases in the last year. Yeah, and barefoot is another master plan community. So, well, I think three golf courses in here. Um, there's about 20 different sub communities within barefoot condos. Um, you have like high rise condos that are right here on the intercoastal waterway. Then you have a bunch of the low rise, more residential style condos and single family homes in here as well. They even have a pub and a little bit of shopping now. Yep. Yeah. So that's a cool area. And then as we head north, now we're in true North Myrtle Beach, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So North Myrtle Beach is... It's a really fun area, you know, and it's kind of away from all the, the busyness of Myrtle Beach. Uh, the cities ran well. They, they have tons of parks and they put on big light shows for Christmas every year. Um, as you get, you can kind of skip the Atlanta, Atlantic Beach area <laughs> and go a little bit more north and you'll find Main Street. And that's kind of the hub of North Myrtle Beach certainly within the avenues and what you'll find here is this is the shag capital of the u.s <laughs> so they do shag festivals twice a year they do saint patty's day festivals they do christmas parades fourth of july parades this is a huge golf cart community uh of course you have the beaches and the bars right along the beach there did it before the camera turned on weren't you issuing a challenge to our our viewers a shag competition? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if anybody could beat you. Well, Please. highly unlikely. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that up to you. I will not be participating in that. But yeah, this is a really neat spot. You got a bunch of like restaurants and shops right here, right on Main Street. Um, this is where they always close down the road for like the St. Patty's Day right. Festival, right? And things like that. Big golf so, cart parades. You yeah. have a park right where those trees are. You got a park back here that's really nice. Got a couple playgrounds, tennis courts. Yeah. yeah. Clean park. Baseball fields there um, and th there's a lot of character within these avenues yeah this is where we live and it's you know you find nice new uh raised beach houses but you also find a little bit older style beach houses with tons of character and just a really fun area yeah and you mentioned the park there which is a good time to mention the north myrtle beach sports complex right yeah so kind of yeah. similar to what they have in market common right just a little bit inland they're trying to compete the waterway yeah. yeah so this is where they do the christmas you can see it's a big loop this is where they do the christmas light show and they put on a huge huge light show uh they have santa's village where you can come meet santa and do all the fun festivities another great playground there for the kids yeah and, and that's the, also where they do baseball tournaments softball yeah. tournaments and they got the wakeboard park here which is fun for the fun. kids and they do like the big um water. shark park is yeah. what it's called and it's what big it's, inflatable yeah like obstacle course right yeah and then the wakeboard parks so that's a pretty cool area cool and yeah. then we'll keep heading north so you get a little more like a little more fishing, small fishing village feel as you get up into Little River. Little River is probably one of my favorite. Yeah. Before we get to Little River, beach. there's almost like a North Myrtle Beach has its own Golden Mile almost up here, right? It's not quite as big. Yeah. We've got all these oceanfront homes here, right? 
Where is that? Is that 10th? Is that like 10th North? Sixth. Yeah. 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 Six through like 18th is where it is basically yeah. North Myrtle Beach is Golden Mile. Yep. We Beautiful got all these homes. big oceanfront homes and it goes inland a little bit as well. Right. You don't have to be right on the ocean, but another really nice area. I always like driving through here whenever I'm showing homes or condos up in Cherry Grove, drive mm -hmm. through this section here. Um, and now most of this area is in a flood zone. Yeah. This Cherry Grove area. So, yeah, as you get, you see Cherry Grove is a big inlet. This is actually like world renowned uh, or at least East Coast renowned flounder fishing here. Uh, a lot of fun. You see all those streams. You can, if you have a little boat, you can get up in there and just have a ball and explore all those, those little streams. And as the tide comes up, float up the inlet and as the tide goes back out make sure you don't get stuck <laughs> do you see a lot of stuck boats when the tide oh, yeah. goes low i think oh, this yeah. is a lot of a place where a lot of people get stuck right because yeah. they don't dredge down this way no, right so no. you just... and where that lets out to the ocean that is very shallow yeah. so at low tide you can actually walk, walk across, across that yeah yeah i've heard stories of people getting stuck there um so th yeah this is the cherry grove area here um, this is where you're going to find like a lot of homes on stilts raised up. Let's see if we can put our little guy over here. I call those canal houses right on the canal there. Very cool little lifestyle. Yeah. And these are all walking distance to the beach, right? So even though they're not right on the beach, a lot of them have that canal right in the back and within a quarter mile, you know, five minute walk, you're right at the beach here. Yeah, those homes are very in demand for um, investors and for renters because it's such a popular area. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's Cherry Grove, which is the northernmost tip. It's part of Myrtle Beach or North Myrtle Beach, I'm sorry. Um, before we get into North Carolina, South Carolina, that's going to be the most northern residential area right on the beach because this whole island here is just nothing on it, right? Just nature preserve. Um, and before we get into talking about Cherry Grove, let me pull up the prices for the North Myrtle Beach area. So North Myrtle Beach, 122 homes sold in the last three months at an average price of 695,000. Um, again, North Myrtle Beach is mainly like right on the beach, right? So that's why it's pretty expensive. Um, but a more affordable area up on the north end is Little River, right? Just uh, west of the waterway. Um, you were talking a little bit about Little River. Some really popular communities up here. You have Heather Glen that is so close to the border. I mean, you probably throw a rock from your backyard across into the border there. And then um, Bridgewater as well is another big popular community. So this is Heather Glen here. It's not really updated on the map, um, showing the homes and everything. This used to be a golf course, uh, but now it's uh, a lot a of golf courses community. are going away down here. Yeah. Yep. And you see, that's where the intercoastal meets the ocean. And that forms a little island that a lot of the locals like to take their boat to called Bird Island. A lot of fun just, you know, having boat days out there. Uh, and as you go north, right around where Heather Glen is, you kind of get into Calabash, which is yeah, Probably. right across the border, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like half and half. Yeah, and then a lot of people I know that live up on the north end, they'll actually, instead of driving south and crossing over the intercoastal waterway on Highway 9 and coming to the beach here in Cherry Grove, um, they'll actually just go across in the north or yeah, into North Carolina and cross over and go to the beach here, Sunset Beach, which is a lot more residential, a lot quieter. So you can live in South Carolina and still be within what 15 yeah. 20 minutes of this beach here all of that is a really cool area yeah. um and then you got the Vereen gardens up here as well which i've never been there but you've spent some time there right it's a nice yeah. little area to just walk around and get out in nature right yeah exactly it's kind of like a state park a little memorial um really cool little inlet scene you can take family pictures there you can you know kind of go on little hikes Great place to take the kids. Yep. So and that's just goes, all these nature trails right here. And, and it, it comes right out to the waterway. Right. 
Yeah. So very cool area. Fun place to fish and crab and just get down into the. Oh, we can actually put our guy out here on the waterway. Hey, look at that. Yeah, and there's a lot of like little. on a boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Google Maps boat. <laughs> There's a lot of little docks that come out off of Marine Gardens, right? So you can yep. walk on all this like marshy area, right? Mm -hmm. You know, all the times I've taken a boat to Bird Island, I never knew what that stuff was on the left. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Marine Gardens. Old Marine Gardens. Yeah. Fun fact. We got a casino boat here too in Little River, uh, the Big M Casino boat. Yeah. So this is a cool spot too with some nice restaurants right on the on the water here let's drop a little guy right down here yeah that's the little river waterfront so right right behind the casino boat building here is the patio tiki bar really cool spot for live music and food and you got some other cool spots right here i think this is hurricanes yeah hurricane you can see Duels. the trees hanging over the the restaurants there it just creates such a nice ambiance yep we got crab catchers down there, which is one of my favorites. And there's the casino boat there. Yep. So that's a little river. Um, and then before we head down south, I want to talk a little bit about Longs. Um, and this is where one of the hospitals is too, by the way, McLeod up here on the north end. Um, so Longs is more of an up and coming area. It's a little bit more rural um so you see a lot more like farmland a lot less to do around um, but really it's close i mean to get down highway nine into cherry grove from this 905 area which is the center of longs is maybe like 15 minutes quick drive um so even though it's a little bit more rural um it's your dollar will stretch further yeah so longs. if we pull up the longs home sold um, 182 homes sold in the first quarter, average price point of $322,000. Um, that's one of the lowest, if not the lowest on the list. Um, so you definitely get a lot of bang for your buck in Longs. And I think in the next 10 years, um, Longs is going to look very different than it does today. A yeah. lot of the builders, as they're selling out of their communities on the coast, they're moving inland. Um, Longs is one of those areas where they were able to get some cheap land and the communities are coming. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's the next Carolina Forest type area. As yeah. Myrtle Beach gets full, Carolina Forest gets full. It, these people got to go somewhere and Longs is the next in line. Yeah, I think they just got approved for a Walmart up in Longs. So, I mean, that's a good sign, right? That's big. Yeah. yeah. Big for the that Longs is, people. That yeah. is huge. Yeah. No more Dollar General. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we'll head south and we'll stick inland a little bit. We'll check out Conway. This is another area where you get some good bang for your buck. Um, so Conway is a massive area. So 376 homes sold um, at an average price of $330,000. You guys want to talk about Conway a little bit? I'm going to pull up and actually just show how big it is with the the homes that sold recently in there. Yeah, Conway is um, where Coastal Carolina is. A lot of people think Coastal Carolina is in Myrtle Beach. It's actually in Conway. And as Coastal is growing and becoming more popular, um, they're really taking that money and revamping downtown Conway area. Downtown Conway is super nice. There's so much to do there. There's all these little quaint little shops on Main Street. Um, there's great restaurants there. You got uh, Rivertown Bistro, which is one of my favorite restaurants. Um, I think it's one of the best at the beach, and it's not even at the beach. Um, so Conway, Conway is very old school town, um, but there's a lot of charm and and a lot of people like to yeah. a lot of locals like to go hang out in Conway, yeah. especially during um, to the tourist season. Yeah, you can see this is the span of homes sold here in Conway. So, of course, you got like downtown Conway, which Ray was talking about a little bit, but kind of like Myrtle Beach, Conway is, there's a lot of areas to Conway. Um, so it spans out a lot. Some of these areas out here, especially on the further end of Conway, I mean, this is very rural out in this area out here. Um, but you also have parts of Conway that are basically in Carolina Forest. 
um, that are still within a lot of the the mix of things. Um, then of course you have downtowns. So if you're close to downtown, there's a ton to do. Um, and we'll pull back up Google Maps here, kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. Um, so here's some of those areas in Conway that are still, again, within the mix of things without getting too rural. Um, and then you have downtown Conway here. You know what street the main street is here, Third Avenue? Yeah. Pop our little guy on Third Avenue. So you just have a lot of little restaurants and shops. Go to the third, yeah, yeah, third yeah, Avenue doesn't look too good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't see the restaurants on there. Um, this is an old, yeah, it's really been revamped since this. We got to have Max to Google come Max. drive back through. They decorate the whole uh, downtown area with Christmas lights. They have parades there. Um, there's a lot to do. I mean, every that theater college. right there is really yeah. bumping now. They they are all they always put on great shows. Every holiday they decorate the city, right? I mean, even St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, they're they're always decorating, putting up lights. They do something big for Halloween, right? So, yeah, yeah Crooked Oak Tavern, really cool spot there. Um, the one thing with Conway that a lot of people don't realize is the Wakma River does run through here. Right. So people think because they're inland from the beach, they're they don't have to worry about flooding. They're out of the flood zone. Uh, but the Waccamaw River here does cause a bit of flooding. Um, so you do have to be careful just because you're not on the beach doesn't mean you don't have to think about the flooding. Um, and that's actually the flood zone there right there, the flood map. Um, you can actually see the Waccamaw River actually causes more flood zones than even the beach does. Right. Yeah. The Waccamaw and the PD which kind of surround Conway. So um, you can live in Conway and not be in the flood zones, but definitely something to think about. Yeah. You can also be in Conway and have your house on the water too, which is people don't think about either. Yep. Yep. Right on the, the river there. Um, and just talking about flooding now might be a good time to bring up this little map here that you shared let me get this banner out of the way for you guys. So this is the average insurance cost for yep. each town, right? Yeah, I broke it out per zip code here. And this is a real like 10,000 foot bird's eye view of this because this takes into account, you know, new construction homes and homes that are 50 years old that pay three times as much for insurance. But but you can kind of see as you go inland, um, you know, obviously the price of the insurance decreases a little bit. The areas where um, there's newer construction, uh, that brings down the average uh, insurance price too. One thing that really surprised me was this Polly's Island um, average premium of $2,400. Um, you know, I don't know if that's because there's new homes being sold down there or or what, but that was really surprising for me. Yeah, that was interesting to me yeah. when you sent me this. It stood out because Polly's Island, you guys will see when we get to that area, it's got one of the highest average price points um, for our area. Um, so, I mean, it does seem low. But again, this is just yeah. average, right? So uh, much like the average home prices, you're going to have insurance costs below this, above yeah. this. So. so Carolina Forest has a pretty decent uh, average price of 2700 and I think that's um, a result of all the new builds that are going on there. You know, you can you can insure a million dollar home in Carolina Forest for about thirty five hundred bucks. Um, so I think even though Carolina Forest has all those custom home, nice neighborhoods, they're newer. Um, and that's the biggest factor in your insurance costs. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, the cost of the home plays a factor. But then the age is the, the next biggest thing. Right. Yeah. Cool. So from Conway, we'll start heading south. Um, the first area I want to talk about a little bit is like the Forest Brook area, um, which is kind of lumped in with Carolina Forest. It's kind of like split in half. Half of Forest Brook is part of Carolina Forest. Half of Forest Brook is part of like Sockesty. Um, but this is a neat little area. It's kind of quiet and sandwiched between 544 and Highway 31 here. Um, I'm sorry, 501. 
Um, but there's some cool communities here. Um, you have Hunter's Ridge, which is like an older community that's got like big custom homes, some smaller homes as well. Um, fun fact, it's like one of the only communities that allows you to like park a boat or an RV right there at your home. It does have to be behind a fence, um, but if that's something that's important to you, you can do that there in, in Hunter's Ridge. Um, you have Forest Brook Estates, you have Arcadia, um, which I've talked about in a few of my recent videos. That's a Lennar development, right? A brand new Lennar? Well, it's actually three builders. Um, Mungo is building there, Lennar is building there, and Centex, which is a division of Pulte, is building there. Okay. Yeah, so three different builders. Forest Brook is, is Lennar, Forest Brook Estates. Okay. Right. Um, they're just about done there in Forest Brook Estates. They've got some townhomes left and then they'll be out of there. They've been building and expanding there for a while. I don't think they're going to expand anymore. Um, but yeah, Arcadia is pretty new. They've probably got about 300 of the 900 homes are going to build done. So they're about a third of the way through between the three builders. Um, and then south of Forest Brook, we have Sakisti, um, which Sakisti, a lot of people like to talk down on Sakisti for some mm -hmm. reason. I mean, there's definitely some areas that are a little bit older. There's not as much development going on in Sakisti. There are some mobile home parks, but there's a lot of really great communities that get you really close to like Market Common. They get you close to the beach, get you close to a lot of the attractions at a relatively affordable price compared to the towns that are close by, right? So if we pull up the Sakisti average home prices, um, you can see in the last quarter, 249 homes sold at an average price of $393,000, so under $400,000. Um, and just down the road, right, you have Surfside where the average price was $533,000. Um, then you also have Market Common, where the average price was $518,000. So Surfside, I'm sorry, Sakasi again, is right in the mix of all these communities. Um, you just get on 544 and you're in Surfside. Um, you get down 707 and you're in Market Common. Those two communities are literally right in the backyard of Sakasi for a lot less of a cost. Sauxy is a good way to kind of get off the beaten path if you if you want that lifestyle. You can even still find down Peachtree, you know, some homes that have a little bit of land that come with it. And, yep. you know, you're off the uh, the inner coal store, yep. right, right on the walk. You got all these communities here. This is all Sauxy right here, right on the intercoastal waterway. Big flooding area, though. Yeah, that that is the thing with Sauxy, right? a lot of this area right here on the intercoastal because it kind of bends this whole area right here is big flood zone mm -hmm. and it's also um, a lot different if you're ever on the waterway on a boat and you drive through soccer sea you can hop off your boat and you're like level with the homes whereas like when you go into mm -hmm. carolina forest and you're on the waterway you have to climb up like a huge yeah. hill to get to the homes right so in like the Carolina forest area, the waterway is a lot more dredged out, whereas in Sox City, it's pretty level. And then it does this little bend back here, causes some flooding in this general area of Sox City. So not all of Sox City is in a flood zone, but definitely something to look into if you're looking at that area. Anything else to say about Sox City? That's where I went to high school. <laughs> but the schools have good ratings too. So really, I don't yeah. know why people talks are down on soccer. That's where the or... IB program is. So if you have a child that is um, excelled in education and they're going to their school grouped in, in a different community, let's say they're in the Carolina forest area, but uh, you know, again, they they excel in their class. A lot of those kids will actually go to soccer because they have the IB program. And of course that looks good for college and you know, it, it moves them along quicker. Cool. Let's see if we got any new comments how'd coming. You, how'd you get in there? Oh, I wasn't an ID. <laughs> so Joe says hello from Raleigh, North Carolina. Enjoy your channel. Thanks for tuning in, Joe. I've got a bunch of comments today. We haven't been keeping up with this. Sorry, guys. I've been looking at the map. 
We got one guy that wants a 55 community with a boat dock for 350. Um, might need to go to Columbia for that. Yeah, that's that's going to be tough. We don't have a lot of 55 plus communities in the Myrtle Beach area, believe it or not. Um, the big ones are the Dell Webs. Um, so Dell Web Grand Dunes, which is a little bit higher of a price point because it is Grand Dunes. Um, that's going to be the only 55 plus community that's on the waterway. Um, I think you can get a duplex in there, their villa style for, I think probably maybe 430, 420 is going to be the lowest you can get in there. Um, then we have Del Webb, North Myrtle Beach, uh, the Seasons down in Merrill's Inlet. Those are the true 55 plus communities. Um, then there's some other communities sprinkled out throughout that are um, not the 55 plus you might think of where it has all the resort style amenities and the activities directors and things like that, but they do limit the age of who can live there. Right. So that I'm might gonna, be a little I'm going to tell you a secret, Kenny, most of these communities are 55 and up, even if they're not meant to be, <laughs> <laughs> we have so many retirees coming down here and living for, they just want that nice weather, uh, low taxes and just a better way of life down here. Yeah, this came through from Scott. I think we were talking about Market Common. Definitely a cool place. Nice art stores, candy stores, if you like that sort of thing. Um, Scott also left us. He had to go. Sorry, we didn't say bye. All right, let's get back to the map here. So just east of Sakasti is where you're going to have Surfside Beach. This is like one of my favorite areas to go to the beach. Um, Surfside Beach is not big, um, basically runs from 544 to 17 to about this area right here. The pier at Garden City just before that is where Surfside ends and Garden City begins. Um, but Surfside's cool because there's no oceanfront hotels or high rises. So they do have some low rise, smaller condo buildings here in Surfside, a lot of oceanfront homes. Um, it's still a vacation area. A lot of these homes are used as vacation rentals, um, but it's a lot different feel because you don't have a huge tower with hundreds of people staying in it. You have yeah. a little home with maybe a family of 10. Um, so it feels Surfside's, like a quiet little town. Yeah, Surfside's a cool spot. Um, I've done some driving tours right here, right on Ocean Boulevard of Surfside, just quick little tours. Um, but yeah, really cool area. Really like the feel of Surfside. You can just see it, just homes and small condos, quiet. It's called the Family Beach. Um, so really cool area. I love that avenue style. Anywhere you see that grid on the map down by the beach, you just have these, you know, these places where you can ride the golf cart around. You got restaurants around. Everybody's out at the parks. Yeah, and Surfside's a lot like that North Myrtle Beach area where they do like the golf cart parades and the different festivals. You know, they shut down the road. My Rotary that. Club holds a turkey trot there every Thanksgiving morning. They do a 5K and a 10K race. Yep. Where's the pier at? So the pier got destroyed in, what, 2018? Mm -hmm. One of the hurricanes. They just reopened it, so it's brand new. It's not going to be on the map here. Um, but that's a really cool area where there's like um, a lot of restaurants. You can just hang out yep. again, listen to live music. Um, River City Cafe is there. Neil and Pam's, which is a great one. Um, yeah. Nice local spot where a lot of yep. people hang out. My clients actually had a restaurant on the pier uh, that got blown away. Um, and they should be up and running here probably in the next month or two. Conch Cafe, that's another cool Oh, yeah. restaurant there that overlooks the ocean. Um, now we're starting to get from Surfside into Garden City, um, which Garden City is really just this little island here that is separated from Merle's Inlet by the Merle's Inlet. Um, and then it comes up this Cypress Avenue and a little bit across Business 17. So Garden City is a really small area. Um, the most expensive town that we're going to pull up on the map here because it's basically just oceanfront homes for the most part and big oceanfront homes at that. Um, but the average price point Whoa. for 
Garden City for the first quarter, 20 homes sold. So again, not a big area. Um, 1.03 million, our only area where mm. the price point gets over a million dollars. Average. Now, what area yeah. is the, the king tide? Where does that happen? Because we don't we see all those, um, you know, all those all videos of people. Beach. Cherry Grove gets hit pretty bad. Yes. Or, uh, yeah, Cherry Grove and uh, Garden City. Yeah. yeah, Cherry Grove and Garden City get that a lot. Because that's just where, I mean, it's the highest high tide, right? So anywhere where, like, the channels come in from the ocean, they just yeah. fill up. And, yeah. So all of that inlet right there where it's crossing the street, those are bridges. And a lot of the times you'll get, you know, the water run up on the bridges and things like that, but it's not but a few hours before it recedes. Yeah, it's just part of living at the beach. And a lot yeah. of these homes are all going to be raised up, right? So here's all Garden City. Um, so is that the area on the southernmost point? Is that some of the most um, sought after real estate here in Myrtle Beach? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's most sought after because it's not affordable for most mm -hmm. people. But yeah, it's definitely some of the prime real estate here on this southern tip. I mean, this is a really cool area. Um, if you're able to ever like come down to the marsh walk, you can rent jet skis or you can even rent like pontoon boats or go on like a dolphin cruise. Um, and they'll take you out the inlet and you'll get to see both sides. You know, you can come out to the ocean you rent jet skis they'll take you through this whole inlet you come right around the ocean for a little bit so you get to see both sides of this little point area here and just some beautiful beautiful real estate amazing homes um, it's really neat and unique area this is all gated too back this most southern tip here you can't really get through you can yeah, drive really through community. probably about to here i think or so before mm. it's gated and you have to turn around um so you can get a little guy i don't think i've ever there. driven down there yeah, uh, yeah. You'll, you'll get to a point where there's a gate and you can't go much further maybe a little bit further down um but yeah this is a really cool spot to come to the beach too very quiet Parking's a little bit hard to find. Um, Garden City is like one of the only areas though along the beach where you don't have to pay for parking. Um, even in Surfside, you still have to pay um, in most of the areas, but Garden City is all free parking for the most part. So if you can find a spot, um, it's a cool spot to come to the beach. Where's that Conk Cafe? Is that it right there? Um, the, the yellow one? No, this is this is a new restaurant here, right on this little marina, the Quay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's brand new. It's like a three-story building, like rooftop bar. Looks over the inlet, back yeah. up towards Merle's yeah. Inlet. The Con Cafe is it's a little gorgeous. bit further north. It's right before Surfside, I think. It's further up on this end, um, and then just inland from Garden City, you actually have uh, Merle's Inlet. Um, so this is the Merle's Inlet area here. Let me switch over from Garden City to Merle's Inlet. So first quarter of 2024, 115 homes sold at an average price point of $512,000. Um, Garden City is kind of like Carolina Forest. It is its own little town but um, it has Merle's Inlet addresses, right? So you're gonna have a Merle's Inlet address and you have to separate the Merle's Inlet sales out of there. Um, so if you just searched Merle's Inlet uh, without doing that, you might see a little bit higher of a price point, um, but that's just something to remember. Um, I love Merle's Inlet, a lot of cool communities down that way. Um, probably one of the most notable areas is Prince Creek, which is like another master planned community, kind of like Market Common and Grand Dunes where there's 20, 30 sub communities within that. Um, Prince Creek area is this whole section right here. It's home to the TPC Myrtle Beach, which is another beautiful golf course. I've never played there, um, but I've heard some really great things. Um, let's see if we can drop our little guy over here on TPC, where some of these communities are. So again, just a really nice feeling area um, where you can golf cart around. You're not going to be able to get to the beach from Merle's Inlet on a golf course, on a golf cart, I'm sorry, but you can kind of drive around 
the different communities. You can get to your grocery stores. You can get to some restaurants. Um, and I mean, even just like yeah. this Google Maps view, you can just see how beautiful it is. Lots of trees and greenery. Yeah, one of my awesome favorite area. areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of one of my favorite areas, I talk about this all the time, but like one of my favorite areas to go hang out, grab some food is the Merrill's Inlet Marsh Walk here, um, which is another boardwalk area with a bunch of restaurants right on the the marsh. Um, Beautiful area. Yeah, let's see if we can get a 3D. Always view. a lot going on, festivals and yeah, they're they, always they do a huge bike week is just yeah. So bike week, down there. you have some of the big Harley bars just a little bit north of the marsh walk. Um, so I think a little bit up this way, you have some of the big biker bars. So then they do a huge thing down at the inlet for bike week. Um, but such a fun spot to come hang out. You got the boardwalk going out into the marsh. Um, all these restaurants are always doing live music. They're getting fresh seafood right off the boats because you have this little marina here at Wicked Tuna. Um, again, you can rent jet skis and all that stuff. And you can grab a drink and just walk from bar to bar down there, right? Yep. 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 On the on the back. Go look at the goats on Goat Island. Yeah, where I was. I think where that's are the goats? one over. Yeah, I Let's think back up this way. I think this. I think this one's Goat Island right here. Okay. Um, I don't. Are they still putting the goats out there though? Yeah, I they think, do it seasonally. Yeah, they bring okay. them back. Like if there's a storm coming, they load yeah. them up. But you get such them. amazing views here. Um, really cool spots. Come hang out. It's right across from Bubba's. Bubba's Love Shack, which is a really cool little. Yeah, which I think this is Bubba's right here. So this big one is Goat yeah. Island. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. They do a 4th of July boat parade. So people come, they'll line up with their boats. Um, and they'll kind of just, I think they start out here and they come through and they drive through past all the restaurants. So this boardwalk gets packed on 4th of July, people watching the boat parade. Um, you can actually, when you're sitting out on these decks here at the restaurants, you can actually look across to Garden City and you can see the homes, which right on the other side of the homes is the ocean. So it's a really neat area. And then just south of Merle's Inlet is gonna be the last town that we talk about, which is Polly's Island. Um, this is another one of the more expensive areas. You guys have anything to say about Polly's Island? It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. You should go see it for yourself. <laughs> it I think I'm too young to visit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Polly's Island, first quarter, 77 homes sold at an average price of 816000 which is why I was surprised that the insurance was so low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, really private beaches there like real you know that's where you really get away from the from the tourism and yeah um, it's a it's a lot very serene a lot quieter down here um and you don't even have to go all the way down to Polly's island even like litchfield all these beaches in litchfield here are just amazing this is all considered Polly's island litchfield all Polly's island address um even though it's really its own little town just like garden city um but yeah really nice beaches um again no hotels or anything just oceanfront homes public beach access you can come here park um and actually we're out of ori county now and into georgetown county um, and some cool facts about georgetown county um, you can have fires on the beach um, you can hmm. put tents on the beach versus just umbrellas um, which you can actually do that in ori county too in the off season um, but once it's Memorial Day through Labor Day, no more tents. Um, you can only do umbrellas. But in Georgetown, you can kind of do whatever you want. I didn't know you could build want. fires there. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, and Georgetown actually starts in Merrill's Inlet. So part of Garden City is in Georgetown County as well. So you can go do like fires on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. Fires. Yeah. This area between Polly's Island and Merrill's Inlet, probably some of the best golfing on the beach just some really nice golf courses yeah. what are your favorite spots um i like the reserve actually we went out there uh fall of last year and it was just gorgeous i've never really Even gone more south fun. of myrtle beach at all uh, myrtle's inlet um international club but that's probably the furthest south i've golfed yep you got true blue here it is really nice caledonia one. too Yep. 
It's a lot less commercialized than Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of people call it like shabby chic, so it's still beachy, but a little bit more upscale. This section here, Polly's Island itself is small. I don't even think it's a mile. This is the island of Polly's Island. Um, but then, of course, you have like the whole town. Um, some cool spots down here, the hammock shops, another fun place to just kind of like walk around, do some shopping, grab some food. Um, one of our favorite steakhouses down there, Frank's. Um, yeah. The outback section, the inside, just like an old school, small, little dark steakhouse but they have the outdoor section which is just they have it covered really nice with like nice lights and greenery um really nice atmosphere down that way if you're ever down there you have to make a reservation though so don't yeah. just try and show up and go there a lot of really nice restaurants real authentic italian yep so that's Polly's island uh litchfield by the sea this is another pretty big vacation spot but a little bit more <clears throat> again upscale so this is the one area here in Polly's island where they do have like the oceanfront high-rise hotel type buildings um this is where like the racket club is too they used to have like i don't know 10 15 tennis courts i think they turned half of them into pickleball now with the big pickleball craze uh -huh. so that's litchfield by the sea um and in between like merrill's inlet and uh Polly's island you have some cool spots so you have like Huntington Beach State Park with the Adelaide Castle. And then right across from there, you have Brook Green Gardens. That's where they do the Night of a Thousand Candles. All that fun stuff. Brook Green Garden is really cool to go take the family to and check out all the statues and the gardens. And yeah, so it's like a zoo. botanical gardens and sculpture park. And yeah, their, their biggest festival they do is the Nights of a Thousand Candles, which I think used to be one night, but now it's many, many nights in the winter season. We can walk around at night, hot chocolate, apple cider, and yeah, just yeah, look at all the lights. lights everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thousands of hand -lit lights in the yeah, pond. hand -lit candles yeah, that hand they light every night, and then Christmas lights as well. So a really cool spot. Um, and that's kind of an overview of the greater Myrtle Beach area. You guys have anything else you want to add? I think we about covered it. About covered it. The Myrtle Beach State Park is another really cool state. That Huntington is hard to beat. You know, yeah. That Huntington State Park, it just offers a lot of real natural beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, you can camp at those parks. Yeah, both you of them. You can fish off the beach. And fun fact, you can get a annual pass for the state parks. Every single state park in South Carolina, which I think there's like 44 of them, it's like $100. Um, so if you don't live near some of these other beaches or you want something that's even more private, more parking, you want bathrooms and picnic pavilions and things like that, get a state park pass for a hundred bucks a year. Um, you can go park at those beaches. And it's a lot quieter, obviously, because it's private. Um, and then if you're ever traveling in South Carolina, you have access to all the state parks. Once you get down to Polly's too, you're pretty, pretty close to Charleston, about an hour and a half, you say? Yeah, because Myrtle, two hours. I mean, there's parts of Myrtle Beach you can get to Charleston in under two hours. So, I mean, Polly's a little over an hour. Yeah, maybe yeah. like an hour and 15 minutes you're down into Charleston. And that downtown Georgetown area is really coming around, revamping itself. And uh, the waterfront down there is just gorgeous. Yeah, I don't spend a lot, a lot of time south of Polly's unless we're like going to Charleston for a weekend or whatever. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are talking about Georgetown, kind of like Conway. It's an older the town next. that they're trying to revamp. Mm -hmm. A lot of big custom home communities that they sold lots in there back in the early 2000s for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then obviously the crash happened. So nobody built homes. Um, and then lots started selling for really cheap. Um, and now people are starting to build homes in those communities. So um, definitely look out for Georgetown to be growing. Um, there's kind of your overview of the Myrtle Beach area. Um, a lot of people too ask about like storms. Um, obviously we're right on the coast. We're in the hurricane belt. Storms are always a threat. Um, we're getting into hurricane season soon. I think it's like from June to October. Um, but the Myrtle Beach area is kind of neat because it's like this little cove. So it creates a little bit of protection 
um, because we're not sticking out and jutting out quite like Charleston is or quite like the Wilmington area right. is. Um, kind of creates a little bit of protection. Obviously, it doesn't keep you 100% safe, um, but that is it does a work reason in why a lot of, of the storms get pushed up the coast um, and just miss us a little bit sometimes. So, yeah. That's also why people like the north and the south is because of the shape of the cove. You know, you can see it kind of points off and and dumps out to the ocean. Yep. Cool. Well, I think that's that's south. all I got. You guys got anything yeah. else you want to add? No. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys checking in. I think we got one more new comment that came in. Kenny said, thank you guys. Helped a lot. You're very welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, of course, if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, all of our contact info will be down in the description. You got Rob's phone number. If you need to get a mortgage, you got Ray's phone number. If you need to get some insurance, um, you got a link to sign up and schedule a call with me down in the description. Um, again, if you're new to this channel, um, we talk about all things Myrtle Beach, things to do here, um, tips and advice about the area and the real estate. So if that's interesting to you, if you're thinking about moving to the area, be sure to hit that subscribe button and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks, guys. See you. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.